Welcome to the madhouse! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of East vs. West. West. I am here with my co-host, Eddie, from Eddie Tame, and it's just us again, buddy. Yeah, what up, man? Back to back in original form, just back, us two. Back to the roots, and we're back again with another East vs. West episode. This week, we're going to be giving you our top 10 most anticipated mazes uh, at the both Universal Studios Orlando and Universal Studios Hollywood. Um, this is the only show on uh, YouTube where you can get the dose of both coasts from Halloween Horror Nights to uh, different haunt events that we have similar across the uh, coasts. And uh, we're glad to uh, bring this uh, show to you and share some of our favorite things about Horror Nights and just geeking out about Horror Nights and other haunt events um, on this show. So today, uh, like I said, we're going to talk about our top 10 most anticipated mazes. Make sure to tune in next week because then we're going to list our top uh, anticipated scare zones. That way we can get you more hyped for the event. And hopefully your lists are similar to uh, ours. If you're in Orlando, you probably are going to be agreeing or disagreeing with Eddie. And if you're in Hollywood, same thing. You'll probably be agreeing or disagreeing with some of our picks. But I hope you guys enjoy the video nonetheless. So here we go. We're going to start off with number 10 on my most anticipated list. By the way, me and Eddie don't know any of our... Uh, we don't know any of our lists, so this is going to be kind of exciting to see where we rank our uh, mazes, our respective properties at the events. So let's let's just go. Uh, number ten for me, The Walking Dead. Now, anyone who's anyone that goes to HHN Hollywood knows that The Walking Dead is a year-round attraction, and it is here, uh, like I said, year-round. So you can go through it at any point. The only thing that changes in uh, Halloween Horror Nights is they add like a couple more zombies that are not usually in specific places. So that's usually about it when they when they take it to Halloween Horror Nights. There's not much differences in scenic wise or um, you know the rest of the maze other than maybe two or three more zombies. So um, yeah, that's that's why that's at number ten only because it's literally the same thing. Um, all right, Eddie, your number ten. So my number ten, as you probably expected, and, and FYI, we're only like fourteen days away from Orlando opening up. There you go. Um, but my number 10, as you probably expected and as you've heard me kind of gripe with in the past few videos that we've done, is Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses. Um, not a fan of the movie now that I've rewatched it, uh, but I do think that this could potentially be a very gory and scary house. So um, this doesn't take away from the fact that the scares may still be there, but it's just not a house that I'm hyped up for. So it has to come in dead last. Uh Understandable. I know it's not everyone's favorite uh, film by Rob Zombie, or if a lot of people aren't Rob Zombie fans out there and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, actually, speaking of House of a Thousand Corpses, that's going to segue to my number nine most anticipated, which is House of a Thousand Corpses. Now, I know in the past I've talked about and defended this maze and this property and stuff like that um, over and over again, and I am a huge Rob Zombie fan, both music and movies, and... Um, I, I really did enjoy this maze when I went through it in 2011, but that's why it's at my number nine spot in this list because um, I've witnessed that maze in 2011 as a 3D maze, which if it's going to be the same thing as the 2011 maze, which it most likely will, I'm looking at the facade at our end of the, um, of the coast, and I, I'm looking at the facade, and it looks about the same from uh, 2011 so it looks like it's going to be just essentially the same maze but not in 3d that's the only thing i'm looking forward to with this maze is it's not going to be in 3d so we'll see if uh they've changed anything or if they added anything from last time uh, i have no idea but yeah that, that's why it's at my number nine because i've already experienced this um maze along with the walking dead so i already know what to expect in these mazes uh with uh as a as if the other eight i've never um experienced them so that's the only reason why I put uh, House of a Thousand Corpses in uh, my number nine spot. So I'm, I'm going to have to agree with you. You know, it should go as dead last. We agree 100%. It's not going to be the greatest. I know it. I know it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. But, uh, hey, but you have The Walking Dead. It's going to have 
more zombies than ever. More so. zombies than ever. That's how we've been advertising it over here on NOH and TLEV. Yeah, TLEV. TLEV agrees with us, too. I think they put House of a Thousand Corpses as last in their video as well. So shout out to those guys for agreeing with me. I thought I was all, all alone on this one. <laughs> but um, my number nine would be Depths of Fear. Um, although I do find this one to be an interesting kind of concept, you know, an underwater concept. We talk, talked about how potentially that could have been like a Jaws type of house. But I don't know. Something about this one, once again, uh, this list is going to get more and more difficult the further and further we move up. Agreed. When I get past Agreed. like, when I get past like seven, six to to number one was really difficult to put in the right order. And um, who, who knows if that that's probably going to change once we actually go to the event. But my that's my number nine, and then I'll, I'll segue us into number eight, and then you could do your number eight. So my number eight is Nightingale's Blood Pit. Um, this one. Once again, kind of like a House of a Thousand Corpses, I, I do see this one kind of potentially being a, a house that could bring the, the scares back, like the real scares back. Um, it, you know, it says it in the name, Blood Pit, so it could be a, a gorier house. Uh, but a, a few things about it is I, I wasn't there for, for the original Nightingale's house, so I'm not familiar. I don't have that connection with it, even though I know that the Orlando crowd does. And secondly, it has nothing to do with what supposedly the theme is this year which is the 80s so that's why it came up in my number eight definitely yeah that that goes a lot too with house of a thousand corpses where i've heard various people say that it has really nothing to do with the 80s this year that's why it kind of throws the event a little um off guard as well so uh my number eight is going to go to an original out here in hollywood only um and i enjoyed the scare zone last year i had an amazing time going through it and stuff like that but i'm just kind of seeing it difficult to translate into a maze but hopefully it, it shocks me and surprises me which is going to be holidays in hell now if you guys didn't go through holidays in hell last year it was essentially the the holidays but turned like in a sinister point of view and stuff like that so they pretty much put a, a dark twist on all the holidays which was an amazing concept an amazing scare zone now i've seen a lot of um concept art and a lot of uh ideas for this maze of what it's going to look like um and some of it actually got me really excited like the fourth of july scene really excites me and stuff like that however um I don't know. I, I, I have to see more of it, and I have to walk through it. This may go up in my list, um, but as of right now, this is kind of the low. On top of that, we're getting music by Figure, which uh, in the past, he's done music at the event for mazes like uh, Universal Monsters Remix, Universal Monsters Resurrection, and I believe Face Off. Um, so he's no stranger to the event. He's coming back to do an original uh, kind of score for the event, and he's, he's known as an EDM artist, so it's going to be a lot of dubstep and stuff like that. And uh, John Murdy made original lyrics for a lot of the holidays, like jingles and stuff like that, which are going to be incorporated into the music, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but I, I have to see more of it. I mean, I, I'm kind of getting a little tired of them kind of uh, turning Christmas like a, a dark Christmas at the event. I mean, it, it's cool and all, Krampus, but I, I, I want to see something more original, if, if that makes any sense. But, yeah, Holidays in Hell is my number eight. Um Segwaying us into number seven, The Curse of Pandora's Box. Now, this is another original maze that is coming to the event um, at, in Hollywood, and it's supposed to be based around the mythology of Pandora's Box. Um, from what I hear, there's supposed to be, like, demons and dark stuff coming into this maze and stuff when that box has been open. Now... There was very little information given to us about this maze other than what Murdy told us on Twitter, so... I'm going to be going into this maze pretty blind compared to the other properties and stuff where I kind of have a sense of what it's going to be like. So this one is the only maze at the event where I'm going blind. That's why it's pretty low on the list as well because, like I said, we only know so much that what Murdy gave us on Twitter that I, I don't really know what to expect. And I know it's based around, I believe, Greek mythology. So, I mean, I'm kind of excited for that point of view. Uh, maybe we'll see a lot of the Greek gods like all freaking decked out like looking sinister and stuff like that which would be pretty cool but um yeah this is another original that i'm kind of skeptical about but i gotta walk through to see hopefully maybe i might like it all right cool so is that my turn your turn uh, i gotta tell you one thing though I, I did do a little bit of like research on the greek mythology behind uh pandora's box and it's actually a really cool story about how this box was like given to pan uh i think her name was pandora, yeah her right? name was pandora Right. And she was told not to open it. And when she opened it, she basically unleashed like fear, death. Yeah. 
and all this stuff. But then when she locked the box up to stop all this bad stuff from coming out, what she locked up in there was hope. So she she released all this fear on everybody and all these negative entities, but locked up our hope, yeah. which uh, I thought that was a pretty cool like story. So I but, can see um, how that could translate to the maze, but yeah. Yeah, and like basically hope eventually becomes like this sinister type of like being that comes back to like help us or whatever. Yeah. Um, when I read it, when I read up on it, so it sounds pretty cool. All right, but to my number seven, my number seven is Jordan Peele's Us. All right. Um, I I do like Jordan Peele, and I did enjoy this movie. I once again will say probably like a broken record that I don't think it lived up to the hype. But um, this one could be one of the ones. Once again, we're now we're getting really close to the point where. Um, it's it's getting to the point where I had a hard time putting these in order. Uh, so us could end up being a great house if they end up kind of like figuring out how to make our tethered selves visible to ourselves somehow with some type of special effect. Then I will take back everything I've said, and it will probably land like top three. But at the moment, it's number seven. Definitely. And then segueing us to number six. This is actually a house that I'm actually looking forward to experiencing. It's Graveyard Games. Okay. Um, I, I've told you that I, I really like the the new kind of approach that they have with that interactive Facebook page and Facebook Messenger where you could talk to the storytellers and kids from the town where, where this happened. So, um, yeah, this is a, a number six that I think is actually going to be a great house. I, I'm actually, I'm hyped for this one. This is where the hype lift list actually becomes houses that I'm hyped for. Definitely. Uh, one thing, if I can suggest that when you're at the event this year, try to film uh, you having the conversation with the people on Facebook because I want to see how that's like. Oh, that that would be dope. But I, I think my camera at the event is going to be my cell phone. So that's going to be tough unless oh. I could like screen, screen film or something. I think if you download, there's probably an app, maybe uh, just if, if you have time, I don't know if you're going to wait, like how long you're going to wait lines or not. But um, if you have time uh, while you're in line, you can just kind of throw on the screen recording app and put that part of your vlog or something like that. Like this is what I was like when I went to graveyard games and stuff. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing a lot of videos uh, behind that interactiveness. No, I think that's an amazing concept for a maze and, you get a little bit more backstory of like the characters and stuff and where this maze is going to take you. This sets up the story of uh, what you're gonna about to walk through, which I think is awesome. Um, my number six, and yeah, like you said, from here on, this was kind of the hardest point where, uh, like I said, we have a stacked lineup in Hollywood this year. There's a stacked lineup in Orlando this year, and it was very hard to put these properties uh, in the order I did. But ultimately, this is how I felt about them, um, and hopefully a lot of these properties will move up in my list. Who knows? But my number six is Universal Monsters Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Now, I'm, I was a huge fan of the maze last year. I think it was probably my favorite maze at the event last year with the Universal Monsters, and I'm very excited for, her, for you guys to get to witness that. And it looks like they're advertising the creature from the Black Lagoon, so you guys are actually lucky on that one. Um, if Yeah, it would hurt. If he comes into the maze, they may be just advertising it just to advertise it, but if he comes in the maze, that's going to be a really big thumbs up for you guys. Um, but Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Now, I'm a fan of both of those um, characters. Now, if you guys watch my videos on my set, you guys know I have a big uh, Frankenstein poster. It's one of my favorite pictures of Frankenstein where he's just looking at the camera, and it looks so badass. Um, and I, I'm a huge fan of werewolves, and a lot, a lot of that has to do with the Wolfman. Um, that's what made me a fan of werewolves and stuff like that. But um, I don't know. I, I, I hope my, my only fear for this maze is going to be a ton of black walls um, and stuff like that. I, I, I want to know how they're going to do it set piece wise, if they're going to go to like the graveyards or if they're going to go to Frankenstein's castle. Um, that's about my only fear for this maze, though, that it's going to be a, just a ton of black walls. And it's just going to be mostly scare opportunities where you're walking in the middle and both creatures come at you from the sides and they scare you, which is supposed to be like them facing off. But um, I don't know. I hope that it's not a bunch of black walls, and I hope they do a very good job scenic wise. But what's a black wall? You know. Oh, okay. I know. I know what you're doing. If you, if you're Sammy uh, in the us maze, hashtag white walls. So um, anyway, 
but nonetheless, um, I think what's keeping my hype for this maze is the original score that Slash is doing again. He's coming back for a second consecutive year to do another uh, score for the Universal Monsters maze, which I think is awesome. Uh, I hope you guys get to experience his score. I hope it... Uh, I hope it goes into the maze over there in Orlando as well. Um, but uh, he, he came, he scored the first year, and it was amazing. And I can't wait to see what new original music he comes up with uh, this year. So that's going to be really cool. Segwaying into our number five. Now we're in the top five uh, most anticipated mazes, and this is where it really got hard for me. Now, um, keep in mind. I swapped my number five and my number three very last minute because I felt um, a better relationship with one of them compared to the other, and I'll explain to that when we get to uh, n number three. But um, my number five is Creepshow. Now, Creepshow is going to be exclusively at HHN Hollywood this year. Um, Greg Nicotero is working on a new uh, anthology series with Shudder to bring back and revive Creepshow from the original um movie that Stephen King uh, produced and the comic book by Stephen King as well. Um, and they're going to be mixing a lot of the original 1980s movie in it as well. So I'm very much looking forward to Creepshow. Uh, and and th again, this is another maze where I'm hoping we don't get a ton of black walls. But from what I've seen at the panel at Midsummer Scream, it looks like we're going to have a lot of scenic uh, uh, sections in this maze. They're going to focus on, I think, four or five stories in this maze with a prologue and an epilogue. So this is going to be a pretty stacked maze where each room you go in, it's going to be something different. And um, I'm very much looking forward to seeing how the, the creep looks in the in the maze where he, he's kind of like a decayed uh, skeleton in a way, and uh, he looks really cool. So I'm, I'm curious to see how he's going to look. Uh, the facade, I've seen it already in person uh, when I went to Universal for the latest construction update, and it the comic book looks fantastic. It's a comic book uh, facade, an original thing that they came up with, which I think looks amazing. So, yeah, Creepshow, I, I cannot wait for it, and I love anthology things, so that's why this is at my number five. So, my number five, so we're at the top five, top five. is Ghostbusters. Oh. Um, once again, this is the tough part. I am actually, the more and more I think about it and the more and more I see advertising for it, the more and more I want to walk through this maze, and I think it's going to be amazing. It's going to be extremely scenic. I, I, I don't think I, it's going to be the most terrifying maze, which is why it's not more uh, higher on the list or lower, however you want to look at it. But, um, yeah, it's my number five. I, I'm looking forward to seeing Slimer. I, I've heard some things about the, the um, Stay Puft Mar Marshmallow Man. I, I've heard that he's going to be pretty massive. So if it ends up coming out that way, and also like I like I told you last time, if, if he's part of the facade where maybe you see the city at, when you're entering, that's the facade, but you could see him in the distance, kind of like they force perspective type of of like uh, illusion where they make him look extremely like huge in the distance, maybe like moving and like trampling over the city. Yeah, um, that'll be another thing that will immediately immediately change my mind, and I'll have to move it up the list. Uh, but at the moment, it's sitting at my number five, Ghostbusters. Um, segueing into my next one, um, number four. My number four is, and this one was really tough, uh, but just the other ones I'm looking a little bit more forward to. Um, this one was really tough. It kind of hurt me to, to put it here. Uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I... Uh, yeah, you're gonna give me a thumbs down. I knew it, but I love this this uh, scare zone last year. I know for a fact I'm gonna love it as a house. The costumes were amazing. Um, I just am looking forward to the next three. A uh, skosh more. The number one I'm looking forward to the most. I'm looking forward to a lot. Uh, but as my number four, this is like a really strong number four. It's hyped. I'm really hyped to walk through this one. Definitely, definitely. My number four um, is going to probably get some heat in the comments, and only because I really enjoyed the maze last year, but I had a couple of issues with it, and that is Stranger Things Season 2 and a little bit of Season 3. Um, the reason why I put this maze at number four is, yes, I'm very hyped for this, um, but the thing and TLV agrees and they put it they said it better they actually refreshed my memory when they brought it up in their video but they said and this kind of killed the effect for me too because I saw it um, 
the demogorgons in the costumes, you can see their faces and the mouths, and you can see their eyes and stuff. And that's what really killed the maze for me last year. But nonetheless, the maze was fantastic last year. That was my number two uh, favorite maze of the event last year. And only because the set pieces were amazing. It really felt like you were immersed into the show. Um, it, it felt like you were part of... Uh, you know, the the little kids, the gang and stuff like that, which I thought was really fun. Um, and there's a lot of stuff I want to see in Season 2. Like, uh, of course, when you see punk rock version of freaking Eleven, when she meets her uh, other sister. I believe it was number 8 or something like that. Um, the Demodogs is pretty cool. The scene with uh, Dustin and Steve where they're fighting off the Demodogs with the, the nailed bat, which would be pretty cool. Um, I'm curious to see how they're going to accomplish the Mind Flare. Uh, that is definitely something I want to check out because uh, that's going to be a pretty big special effect if they can pull that off. But uh, nonetheless, uh, and also if, they, if they're going to take a little bit from Season 3, I would love to go into the mall, but uh, we'll see. Um, but yeah, Stranger Things for me is at number four only because, like I said, last year the Demogorgons, uh, the masks look horrible. So, uh, segueing into three. Now we're in the top three. And th this is where it really got hard for me because, like, uh, I, I, there's such so much great properties and it's hard to really talk crap on all of them because they're all great this year. Um, but this is the other one I was talking about at number five, why I moved this up to my number three. And my number three is going to go to Jordan Pills us now this was a maze that from what i'm hearing was thrown at the event at very last minute i guess they couldn't get a property of some sort so they threw this one in the maze um but nonetheless if that's true or if it's not true um i'm very much looking forward to this maze um we just did a live stream this la past weekend about um jordan pills us uh, we there's a lot of stuff that I want to see that's in that that's gonna be hopefully in this maze. Uh, the facade is looking like the fun house, so we're gonna enter the fun house. I'm assuming and stuff like that. Um, and I'm very excited to see, like you said, if they can pull off the tether effect of making me looking like a tether, seeing like an evil version of myself, that'd be amazing. But if they can't pull it off, I'm, I'm still looking forward to like looking at the other, all the other tethered people, um, killing each other and stuff like that, fighting and stuff. A lot of the good jump scares. Uh, and going into the uh, underground uh, tunnel and stuff where they live, looking at rabbits and all that fun stuff. So, yeah, Jordan Pills uh, Us is number three for me only because uh, there's a lot of scenes that I really enjoyed in this movie where I want to see come to life. Awesome. Um, yeah, no, this was, I mean, they, they didn't say it out there, but I, I got pretty good confirmation that this was a last minute addition. And the fact that it, didn't have a custom trailer it it's the only original without a custom trailer is pretty evident that they added it last minute yeah i'm not sure if it was because they were still going through the process of uh getting the rights purchasing the rights for it and they didn't expect it to so they had already kind of like had replaced it with yeah you know they had the backup already in place and then last minute they they actually were able to finalize all the documents and said, Oh, we're getting it into the event. Yep. Um, but yeah, so uh, my number three is Yeti, Terra of the Yukon or Yukin. Shout out to Losh TV and his struggle <laughs> with language. Um, <laughs> Good old Losh. Yeah. I mean, English is like his third language or something. I don't right. Know. <laughs> I'm with him on that. Gibberish is like my first. Yeah, right. But, um, yeah, this one I'm looking forward to a lot. Uh, I've already said in a couple of our other videos, I, I kind of have, like, a, a, a love for, you know, Bigfoot and anything surrounding, like, Bigfoots and, and Yetis are a form of Bigfoot. They're snow Bigfoots, basically. Um, and, and I'm really looking forward to seeing somebody in a massive Yeti suit that's, like, six or, or not six foot tall, seven foot tall. That, that'll look amazing. I mean, last year, uh, we had that one maze in Orlando. I, I forget what it's called right now, but it was the one that – it was basically like plants. Oh, okay, and yeah. I, I forget what it was called right now. I forgot uh, what it was called too, but I, I remember we, we talked heavily about it last year. Yeah, and it, it ended up being a house that I actually enjoyed a lot more than I thought because they had these like huge plant creatures that would pop out of nowhere. Basically, the walls were all trees, and out, out of nowhere, this like seven-foot-tall – tree creature which was a person in like stilts would jump out at you and it terrified the hell out of me yeah um so that that's my number my number three 
And then segueing into Numero Dos, number two, um, for me, is Stranger Things, season two, and some of three. Um, they haven't been as specific. I've said this before at, at, in Orlando about what we're going to get from season three. So I'm really hoping that we're getting a good amount of season three. And it's not just like a, an end scene. I, I really want to see the facade of Starcourt Mall where, where you enter it, as well as I would love to see the battle scene with the Mind Flare. Uh, maybe not with the Mind Flare in it, because I understand that could take a lot of freaking work to get an animatronic or a puppet that they could maneuver. Yeah. But at least see that area and walk through it um, would be amazing. Last year, Stranger Things was honestly, it, it was my number two. Um, it wasn't my number two in my hype list, but it was my number two after everything else. Definitely. Um, once I got through with the event. Um, so I, I think it's going to stay number two. I have a strong inkling that it'll hold its ground as my number two from my hype list to after actually having completed it, it will still be my number two. So segue us into number one, senor. Well, I still got to share my number two, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. My bad. Uh, <laughs> my number two. And I have a lot of faith in this maze, and I think this is going to be the underdog of the event, um, Ghostbusters. Now, uh, I'm a huge fan of the Ghostbusters. We watched it uh, at the TLV live stream, and uh, there's a lot of funny parts. It's, it's an essentially a comedy horror movie. Um, and not a lot of people, a lot of people's arguments were saying, like, it's not really a horror movie, you know. I mean, there's nothing really scary about it. But if you take a look at some of these ghosts, they're pretty damn scary. And bringing them to life to the event, uh, if they pop out of you and stuff like that, it's going to be pretty scary to walk through and stuff like that. So I, I'm very much looking forward to seeing uh, not only the sights of this maze, a lot of the iconic scenes from this maze, like the library, uh, hopefully going into more of the... Um, the uh, the headquarters of the Ghostbusters, which is of course the old firehouse, and I know that's the facade for our maze, so I'm I'm very much looking forward to walking through that. Um, but not only the sights, but the smells of the maze. Now, there's a scene, uh, and Mystery put it great, and I and I forgot all about this, but there's a scene where Slimer eats like hot dogs and stuff like that. So that'd be cool. But I, I my main smell would be uh, hopefully marshmallows and Twinkies, because um, there's one point where they talk about uh, an, an oversized Twinkie and stuff like that. Um, so that'd be cool to. Uh, kind of, you know, smell while you're walking through the maze, and then at the end when you see Stay Puff and all that, and hopefully they do effect where he blows up and stuff. Um, you get to see or and smell uh, the Stay Puff marshmallow, which I thought would be really cool. Um, but it, I, I think uh, I think it's it's going to be like I said, the underdog of the event this year, and I hope it it has really good uh, good feedback and stuff like that. I'm very much looking forward to seeing how they pull this off. All right, the moment we've all been waiting for, and I think by now we know each other's number ones because we've heard the list, and it's come down to one last maze. So my number one, and I've been saying it since last year, 2018, when they got it as a scare zone, and I wanted it as a house, and I got my wish. My number one, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Now, everybody knows I have a very, very uh, deep love for this movie because, you know, growing up as a kid... It was one of my favorite horror movies. Just growing up in general, um, I, it's one. Of, it's always been like one of those. Another, and a lot of people don't know this. This is another horror comedy that's actually coming to the event this year. Um, but nonetheless, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. There's a lot of stuff I want to see going into the spaceship. Um, smelling all, I, I, hopefully smelling cotton candy and popcorn throughout the maze, which would be really cool. Um, Officer Mooney's puppet scene where he, they turn him into a puppet, which would be really cool to see. And if they pull that off, Clownzilla would be really cool. Them invading the town, like going into the convenience store when he knocks the freaking biker's head off. And, you know, the puppet show. Uh, them invading that neighborhood, that one uh, where they just turn everyone into cotton candy cocoons and getting balloons and stuff like that. There's a lot of stuff I want to see in this maze. And um, I've said it before and I said it, I'll say it again. This is an hour and a half movie that they have to shrink down into five minutes. So I'm curious to see what they're going to take out, what they're going to leave in. Of course, I, I know they'll put a lot of the iconic scenes in and stuff like that, which I will generally just be happy with. But Killer Clowns from Out of Space, I think for me, is going to steal the show this year. All right, Eddie, what's going to steal the show hopefully for you this year? My number one, in preparation for my number one, I, I bought myself this poster because I'm so excited to see it come back to the event. Yeah, that's exactly what's coming to the event. <laughs> Definitely. Halloween, guys. Halloween is back. 
surprise announcement. Universal just gave me the right to to be the first one to announce this. Wouldn't that be awesome? We get the exclusive. <laughs> yeah, right. So like, we like your show East versus West. You guys get the exclusive first. Yo! Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So my number one, as Anthony said, you've probably been able to deduce just by process of elimination. Yep. Is Universal's monsters. Um, last year, I, I I don't I don't get jealous of Hollywood too often. I, I usually I give Hollywood a hard time, but this was the one house that I was definitely jealous of. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the Wolfman. I'm a huge fan of Frankenstein. Um, I've loved all the derivative movies that have come from the classic monsters. Van Helsing. You know, and things of that nature have always been movies that really attract me. So, um, and now that we've seen the the shirts and everything that's come out, I, I sent you the the cups and the pins for yeah. Killer Clowns, which look amazing. actually. Uh, you and Losh were sending me stuff back to back. Like Losh sent me all the Killer Clown stuff, and then you sent me like the Universal Monsters shirt and stuff like that. And I was like, I might have to freaking PayPal y'all some money to buy me some shit out there if I don't get it out here. I'll hook you up. I got you. Sweet. And, and his his name is pronounced Loche. Loche. Loche you, TV. You, you can Loche. Hey, Loche. <laughs> King Loche. He puts the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, Universal's Monsters is gonna it's gonna kill it for me. I I, I can't wait to walk through that. Um, and anybody who's who's a, a fan of classic horror. You, you can't really, I feel like you, you can't say you're a true fan of classic horror without saying you're a fan of classic monsters. Exactly. That's kind of hard to believe. It's the foundation um, of what horror was built on. Exactly. And Universal's saving grace, too. It, yeah. It brought Universal back from the grave. It, it really so, jump-started the way we look at that company today. Yeah, however ironic that sounds, it brought Universal back from the grave. Horror yeah. did. Um, they did. So, um, I, I think... Orlando's going to do a great job with this house, and I'm looking forward to it. But, yeah, man, that's that's our top both 10. Of our, yeah, top 10 hype list going from uh, our worst, Rob Zombie, Walking to, Dead. <laughs> to our best. Um, Killer Clowns and Universal yeah. Monsters. But, yeah, don't, don't forget, exclusive on the channel, Halloween announced. <laughs> <laughs> in another dimension in the Upside Down. Yeah, right? Um, yeah, going in upside down. Yeah, so thank you guys for uh, checking out this video on our most uh, top 10 anticipated lists for uh, HHN, both Hollywood and Orlando. Again, the only show where you can get the dose of both coasts. Um, Eddie over here from the the East Coast, me over here from the West Coast, and uh, hey. I, I think this is a good uh, kind of point of view for both of us. I mean, uh, and for everyone who's fans of, of this series, it's a good point of view to get a perspective of, uh, like I said, both coasts and uh, to see what everyone's hype list is. And, and I know we are literally weeks away from the event starting. Uh, so to keep with the hype next week, we will be sharing our uh, our most anticipated scare zones at the event this year, um, which I think there's only about maybe five or six in each coast. So uh, that will be a very short list, but uh, We'll, we'll, we'll extend it a little bit so we can talk a little bit more about uh, each scare zone and what we're looking forward to, um, stuff we want to see in them and stuff like that. So be sure to turn in uh, next week for another edition of East vs. West, the only show where you get your dose of both coasts. I am your host, Anthony Zaragoza. And I am your co-host, Eddie from Eddietainment. And don't forget to ask yourself, peeps, have you been Eddietained? Damn right. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. You guys have a good one.